Welcome to LOCAD Live. My name is Connor, I'm the Head of Communication at LOCAD, and joining me in studio, LOCAD founder, Joannes Vemorel. Today's topic might be the most serious one we've ever had on the show. A frank, dispassionate discussion on the true state of the art of AI and supply chain, and importantly, what it means for people in this space. This is intended to be an interactive discussion, so if you have questions, please submit them in the live chat, I will answer as many as we can in the time that we have. So, Joannes, let us not for a second longer bury the lead. Why are we here? Um, I believe that um, we are facing something that we'll probably characterize as a, a mass extinction event for, uh, for uh, uh, back office white collar um, you know, employees. Um, Five years ago, there, was, uh, there were a lot of I would say, consultants that were making studies and saying that, oh, by, um, by 2050, um, AI would have eliminated 90% um, of the, um, the white-collar jobs. And the, the, the reasons and the sort of technologies that were invoked in those reports were completely bogus. And it turned out now that the time frame was also completely bogus. But the only thing that was true is in 90%. And, and the time frame is, the way I see it now, is going to be vastly accelerated. It's not going to be 20, uh, 2050, it's going to be 2030. Um, uh, and, uh, and what changed everything was the technical terms is the success of uh, LLMs, large language models. Um, this will impact, I believe, pretty much all the uh, back office um, uh, white collar jobs, but uh, the ones like um, the ones like the one that exists in supply chains are going to be extremely impacted and uh, and the, the change is coming like super fast and um, and it's coming much faster than what I thought I would say 18 months ago. Well, again, you, you referenced consultants before speculating on the trajectory of this evolution or extinction, as you put it. What exactly, what, what exactly happened last year with the emergence of LLMs to expedite this evolution, as you call it? So, I think the true revolution was about three years ago. I, I missed it, actually. I missed it. Uh, I only realize what was happening about 18 months ago. And by the way, in the lectures, I started to play with generative AI and to play with that. But, um, and, and we did an interview that was almost, almost a year and a half a year, on, uh, on that. And, um, and at the time I was, I was looking at, you know, this, those sort of technology, generative AI, they had been around for 20 years and, and, and making progress every single year. Um, and, my, it was, I, I was starting to realize that it could be used for production purposes, but that was, you know, small touches like um, um, generating a few illustrations for lectures. There was like a ha-ha moment with stable diffusion uh, for, for images. But then uh, there was the LLMs and chatbots were kind of nice, but I, I found that they were, you know, a very fancy gadget, uh, but I had not really realized what they could be used for. And then um, I, I came to my senses by when I when I started to touch GPT-4, uh, the beta. Ver I mean, that was um, a little bit more than a year ago. And then I realized my I would say oh crap moments mm. where no, this technology is production grade, and it's like w literally there was a jump that was absolutely enormous. And, and for me, that was, uh, again, that was um, a little bit than a year ago. I realized with GPT-4, a, a model by OpenAI, um, how GPT-3.5, which had been around mm. for actually several years, how it's intended to be used. So the, the interesting thing is that it took something, that's why I said, you know, the true breakthrough mm. was like three years ago, I missed it. But it took uh, a second breakthrough, which is again GPT-4 for the audience. It's it's an order of magnitude smarter than GPT-3.5. But once you start to understand how it works, and it's much easier with GPT-4 because GPT-4 is so much better, then you can um, adapt what works and just uh, I would say make it 
nice and smooth so that it works with GPT 3.5 as well. And, by, and, and so what happened is that, um, uh, and then the, you see there was the, the sort of realization that the LLM is incredibly powerful, but it's not intended if you want to use it for production purposes, for enterprise, for, for I would say uh, corporate purposes, it is not about having a chatbot. This is, this is a distraction. The, 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 the thing that is very, very interesting is that you have a universal templating machine. Mm. And, uh, and this, is, this is what is completely incredible. And this is very resilient to noise, and we can get to that in a minute. But the bottom line was a little bit more than a year ago, I, I realized that it was production grade, that we had you know, better late than never. We had missed yeah. something that were an, a, an absolute stunning breakthrough 18 months ago. And then I, I, I rewrote entirely the roadmap of Locat, that was mm. again uh, more than a year ago. And we have been frantically upgrading pretty much everything for the last year. We have been quite quiet, I would say, mm. um, in terms of communication on that. But uh, over the, the, the course of the last 12 months, um, uh, we have been at Locad automating one thing after the next and, and things that seems like almost impossible a few years ago to automate mm. and they have been automated. And so if we go to those you know, jobs in supply chains, uh, I can see that, yes, the, 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 the magnitude of what can be delivered uh, as something that is completely robotized is just, compl I mean, I, I just got a sense of vertigo. I mean, it's literally, mm. it, it's, it's even hard to find problem nowadays where you can't, you just can't automate. I mean, in, in the past it was like automating every single type was a challenge, but right now, and, and look at the, the paradox was, look at, I believe we did automate a decade ago, what was the most difficult part, which mm. was, those quantitative decisions. The quantitative decisions were like figuring out how, mu how many you need to purchase to produce. Mm. Um, should you increase or decrease your price point? You know, mm. um, uh, th those quantitative answers they were automated like a decade ago. But what happened during the last twelve months was all the rest, and all the rest became cheap, super fast. And, uh, and easy, literally, uh, with, um, with those modern LLMs. Well, I don't want to get this backwards because the next question would probably be, well, what jobs are going to disappear? But actually, no, I kind of want to go back a step because as you alluded to, or sorry, as you explicitly stated, a year ago we sat here, and actually I checked the rushes. It's almost to the day a year ago you sat in that chair and you said, um, I don't know what the terms of policy on YouTube are, so I, I, won't, I won't curse, but you called <laughs> ChatGPT 3.5 uh, a BS artist, and you likened it to that of a cat. Now, ro so the, the question is, what exactly, when you describe that vertigo sensation, please, as detailed as possible, what caused you to go on that journey from it's a cat to we are in an extinction event? Because it's not, it's st by the way, it is still pretty damp, but it is not what you want. You see, that the thing is that um, LLMs, it's not about to have, you know, um, an intelligent discussion. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, and GPT-4 goes quite far in, mm -hmm. this, in this direction. I mean, th this was quite stunning. But again, the, the strength is um, those universal templating machine I was describing. So le le let's example, be real le le with, yeah, with, with an example. You want to pass a purchase order to a mm -hmm. supplier and you realize that you don't have the MOQ. You know there is an MOQ. Mm. You just don't know the MOQ. So what should you do? You should send an email to the supplier, say, by the way, for those products, what is your MOQ, your minimal order quantity? Mm. Give me the figure. And then the person will reply. And then you just need to add this value somewhere in your system so that you can compute that. This is part of not the decision-making process. So Locad was automating yeah. that. What we were doing is if we know the, the MOQ, mm -hmm. we give you an old sort of other data, we give you the correct answer for how much you should purchase. But getting the MOQ value itself, that was like a thorn. That, how, how do you deal with that? I mean, it's not a difficult problem. Mm -hmm. um, you can certainly write, an, I mean, create an automated system where you have like an email template, and then you will have to pass the answer. And passing the answer is tricky because the supplier might reply, 
um, something that is that that gives you like two MOQs for this product, mm -hmm. it's this one, for this one, it's something else. How do you deal with that? This is not, you know, getting this MOQ information with an email exchange is not fundamentally a hard problem. Mm -hmm. you know, this is not like a fancy calculation. But this was a that was something that was preventing us from robotizing the entire execution of the process end to end. Mm -hmm. We could automate the decision making part, but not the execution end to end of the decision, taking into account what needs to happen before the decision making mm. step and after the decision making step. And now with LLMs, where you have those universal templating machine, if you get an email, say, what was the MOQ reported by the supplier, blah, 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 and, um, and uh, you, you can literally automate those things um, super, super fast. So if you ask GPT, uh, uh, an LLM, to invent stuff, they will hallucinate that's what they do. But if you use them right, and using them right, say, I have an input, I want a transformation, and I get the information out of the transformed input, there you get something that is incredibly robust and production grade. You see, this is just, and, and it turned out that when you look at what um, I would say back office workers, uh, white collars workers are doing, they are, you know, fetching little tidbits of information here and there, and this is like 90% of their time is, is spent doing that, you know, a little bit of chit chat with the environment. And now you have like a universal machine to just automate all of that. And it's very, very straightforward and cheap. So again, to summarize all of that, up until this point, and again, Alokad has been doing this for years, the more quantitative decision-making aspect was automated using other forms of AI. Today you're talking about the more qualitative interpersonal elements that are also subject to automation through LLMs. Yeah, I mean, just think, you want to, 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 to pass your purchase orders. Yes, there is qu compute the, this quantity, that's what Locad has been doing for mo now more than a decade. Mm -hmm. Okay, but then you have all sorts of small things that need to happen. Uh, what if there are two products that are duplicates? So you, you have like two products, it's twice the same reference. How do you see that? The answer was in the past, that was complicated. You could engineer uh, 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 I would say, with a little bit of machine learning and a little bit of specialized NLP, natural language processing techniques, something to deduplicate automatically your, your, um, your catalog. Yes, it would, in the past, it used to take, let's say, 50 hours of software engineering to get something that work. Now with LLM, this deduplication that I'm talking about is literally um, 20 minutes of work, and then you will have a production grade solution to deduplicate. So you see, that's the magnitude of it is absolutely st stunning. And, and, and you have like all those little things uh, that were in the way, and that's why um, companies need to have all those people, because it's not like the, the grand problem that takes a lot of time. The grand problem, like computing this quantity, was already kind of mechanized, but it was the, the small, super mundane problem that were kind of in the way. Um, uh, small data quality issues, duplicated things, um, a missing data point like an MOQ, um, some, uh, a supplier is late, you want to send an email to uh, get a revised um, estimated time of arrival and then get the answer. You see, these sort of things, they are not like super complicated, but before, they, it was already possible to automate those, but again, Every single question and, 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 and micro task like that costed something like, um, let's say, 50 hours of, engineers, of engineering to get it solved. And that is a lot, because if you have like 100 of those, that's, you, you, uh, we, are, we are talking of thousands of man hours, and then you end up with a project, um, that's something that I discuss in the lectures, is that the cost to manage your software products is is not linear, it's, it's super linear. So if you double the complexity, you tend to multiply the cost to maintain this thing, not by two, but by four. So by adding all those things, you were creating like a, a monster software that was very difficult to manage and to update and to extend. If you can, as, as a building block, you have something, LLMs where those things are like trivialized, 
then uh, not only you can preserve, you know, those tasks can be solved in like 20 minutes, but the overall complexity of your software products grows much lower than what it used to be because it's, it's still a very, very simple product. And it's the same trick, this LLM, that is used at every step to solve all those small accidents um, that you have along the way. What is the scale then of this? When you talk about extinction level event, I mean, unpack the implications I of mean, that. Right now, my, again, I've been working with, <laughs> with LLMs and we have been automating stuff right and left and I see some other companies who are doing that. Literally, when it comes to linguistic tasks, mm. so rearrange information, summarize information, extract information from an email and whatnot, um, the, the incredible things is that we are already beyond human um, uh, skill, mm. you know, beyond human intelligence. No problem. Um, again, when I say beyond human intelligence, I mean under limited amount of time. So if I give you an input email and say, what is the MOQ in this email? And I give you 20 seconds to do that, you will get it wrong sometimes. No, as a human, yeah. you know, if, if I give you a thousand emails and, I, and out of each one of those emails, say extract the MOQ and you have like, let's say, 20, 30 seconds to do that every mm. single time, you will have like a hit rate where you, which is maybe something like 98% and sometimes you, got it, you get it wrong. Mm. And the LLMs, well, not only uh, they will do it in like a, <laughs> a second instead yeah. of, of, of doing it in 30 seconds, but they're the, their accuracy will be way above what, um, what an average person would do, even one that has training and whatnot. So, so that's why I say we are like literally beyond human. And, 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 and even for a lot of, um, a lot of things, um, like uh, not, uh, not making like um, uh, newbies uh, mistakes, like if I say, um, for example, if there is a color in the name of a product, mm. and, and I don't know, we are talking of a, a green lighter something. Mm. Maybe green doesn't mean that the green lighter is green. Maybe this is, this is a device to do a check, mm. and the green in green lighter has nothing to do with the actual color of no. the product. You know, this is the sort of things where LLMs are actually incredibly good, um, even taking into account you know, um, every single industry that exists on Earth. It's, it's having like a, a seventh idiot that is very familiar with the terminology and the jargon of pretty much every single vertical that exists on Earth. So suddenly you have something that is a little bit beyond human because if you take a random you know, uh, 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 person, this person is just not readily familiar with the, the, the specific technical terms of your industry. And this person is likely for months, if not years, do you know, just dumb business out of ignorance and not knowing that here this term is misleading and doesn't, for example, this is a, a term that is a color but doesn't refer to a color in this context. It is more like a characteristic mm -hmm. of the product or whatnot. And, and the examples goes on and on and on. And, um, and at Locad, I mean, literally we have been mechanizing tons of things uh, and it's, the, the real question is, is literally what can't we automate? And it's, it's a tough question because so far, pretty much every single thing that we have tried has pretty much worked out of the box. That's the thing that is mind-blowing, is that once you kind of understand what those LLMs are for, you can automate so much, so much. Okay, well, to take the position of a potential naysayer, if you contrast, let's say, white-collar and blue-collar jobs, for decades, people have talked about robots and machines and other forms of technology will basically take the, the tools out of the hands of mechanics, yet in many, in many sectors, like in MRO, for example, there are parts of the world where there's a critical shortage of uh, technicians to work on planes. So that, was, that, that extinction level event was wrong. How confident are you in what you're saying today in the context of similar proclamations that people have made? I mean, and what makes you so sure, I should say. Well. I, mean, I mean, first, what makes me confident and sure is that we have been doing it for a year. <laughs> no. And literally, I mean, just to give you an example of the stuff that we have mechanized at LOCAD, um, RFPs, mm. you know, uh, yeah, yeah, um, no. <laughs> requests for proposals. We get 
um, gigantic Excel documents sent by large companies with insane number of questions, like 600 questions. Yeah, yeah. And um, that, uh, earlier this year, I think it, it was in May or something, I said, okay, we have like yet another 600 question AFP. Wow. It takes literally a week, 10 days, full days to answer all of that. I mean, it's, it's such, such a pain to go through those massive documents, sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I, and, and then I decided, okay, I'm, I'm just going to mechanize that and recycle all the knowledge base that we had already at LOCAD and make an answering machine, mm. you know, an answering machine. So we have already the documents, we have already tons of things. And, and the job of the machine was just write an answer to the question, just like LOCAD would, reuse the knowledge base that we have. And if there is a gap in the knowledge base, just answer fail. And then we will we'll actually, manually, we, will, yeah. we will do it manually. Yeah. And literally, we, doing one FP was taking like more than a week. And automating the whole thing took me a week. So literally, by the time I had engineered the robot, I already had a positive payback. You know, by the time I completed my automation, I was, um, I was regenerating um, the answers. And the, the thing with something like less than 10% of the questions where I, I still had to do it manually and extend the knowledge base of LOCAD. But the interesting thing was when we submitted our answers, uh, the system online, we, there was like submission process online, you submit, and then you have 600 questions, I say, and you add like an automated response that was based on your answers and the, the box you've, you've ticked, here are 100 more questions mm. that had been generated. And so we reapplied. So we thought, oh, we are done, 600 questions. By the way, it was, in the end, that was more than 100 pages worth of, of answers. So mm. it was like a very, very long do, um, uh, document to submit. And then you submit that, and then you, the system uh, to use the RFP process just keeps, gets back to you with 100 more questions. And again, we reuse the tools, and within a few hours, we were done, finally. And, and then all the RFPs that we have done ever since, you know, we, we, we just reuse this tool, and it has been, and that's just one example amongst literally um, two dozen, other dozens. There are companies, though, that have a very dissimilar attitude to yours, ours, I guess. And that is that Gen AI, so generative AI, the large language models that we're, just, that we're describing, will basically become something of a, of a co-pilot for people currently in the space. So let's say demand planners, uh, supply chain practitioners. You won't be re replaced by AI and LLM. You're, you're already yeah. disagreeing, but let me finish. Let me yeah, get to the yeah, end. Yeah, let me get finish, to the end. Yes. Sh humor me, please. <laughs> yes. Uh, where was it? Oh, yeah. It's, it's not going to replace you, it's going to support you. It's going to be a co-pilot to help you make all the decisions, both quantitative and qualitative, that you're, that you're saying will disappear. Why, what's wrong with that? Why, why so is that, that was, by the way, happen? that was the sort of thing that I was envisioning prior to my epiphany, you know, 18 months ago. Uh, if you think like that, no, the LLMs are going to be complete crap, they are going to be a gadget, and you, you're completely missing the point. You're completely missing the point. Why? Um, so, this is the, the thing is, if you want first having, a, a, um, I would say, a conversational, you know, uh, user interface, it is a toy. It is not, I mean, it's nice to have ChatGPT, you know, as, as, as a replacement for your search engine where, okay, that's fine. But if you want to do repetitive job, what you want is just complete end-to-end -end automation. So in this case, the LLM has to become um, a programmatic component of your software. And um, as I said, the, just let's go back to this um, automated RFP answering machine. The goal is not to have a copilot that chats with us to answer these 600 questions RFP. The, what we wanted was a machine that takes the document in and spill out all the questions out and be done with it, you see. And, 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 and just have like a short list of questions where the FAQ needs to be extended and be done with it. You see, it's not about having like a, a co-pilot uh, where you can interact and whatnot. That's a complete waste of time. This is not what automation, true automation is about. And so my, my, my take is that people who are 
thinking like this, they, 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 are, they are not thinking clearly. They, they just think in incremental terms. They just think of uh, adding a new technology to, l to improve a little bit uh, the work, the way it's done, uh, as opposed to rethink entirely how it's done and unlock um, a, a, a 100x productivity improvement in the process. Well then, I mean, what jobs in particular do you think would survive the extinction event that you're describing? Or like, what, what's, what's left? Because if the quantitative's gone and the qualitative's gone and everything's so, automated, what's so left? What's left is everything that is strictly um, non-repetitive. Okay. But, but at a high level. Because you see, um, again, if you look at um, a back office worker, you know, white mm -hmm. collar, what you, people would say, oh, it's not repetitive. Look, I have to send an email there. I have to ask a colleague of, uh, over there. I have to do plenty of things that are a little bit heterogeneous. Mm. Yes, but over the course of one year, they, it's, it's always the same. That repeat over and over and over. And in the past, and by the way, that has been always looming ahead. I mean, for the last four decades, um, the software industry was, and I have always been convinced that it was not a when, it was, it, it was not an if all those mundane stuff would be automated, it was just a when. Uh, and back in the 80s, it was like, there had been like several AI winters where people make grandiose claims and it didn't pan out with um, uh, expert system, with um, uh, data mining. So expert systems were the late 80s, early 90s, data mining was the year 2000, et cetera, et cetera. So there was like a, a series of waves. But the difference is that now it works. I mean, it works and literally LOCAD has been one year down the road and we have like automated things that I've, I would not, never have thought possible that it was um, to be done so easily and so fast. And I've seen, again, other companies doing it as well. And the, 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 the net result is absolutely staggering. And it works. And, and also, it works without, I would say, that much specialized skills or that much, I would say, um, technical overhead. It, those, not, those technologies are also LLMs, very straightforward to adopt. I don't want to be conspiratorial there, but I just want to clarify a phrase that you just said there. You said you've seen so many companies doing that. Are you suggesting that behind the scenes, that's kind of already what's happening? Yes, yes. And that's why, that's why I believe that the time frame is going to be very compressed. That's why I said 2030 for you know, the, the end game, you know, where, where it, it has happened, um, uh, and not 2050. Because um, a, quite a few companies are already moving at maximum speed on that. And, and the effects are already, if you follow the news, you will see that uh, some companies announced like 5,000 5, people being laid off here, there, uh, right and left. And this is happening very fast. And the, the speed of the market will not be defined by the speed of the usual company or the average company. It will be defined by, by the, fast. the fastest. Because you see, the savings are so large that if you if you just late, it, it will this this technological turn will end you, and I believe that although LLMs are less significant in terms of technological achievement than the let's say the internet itself, yeah, yeah. you know the internet itself is bigger, but in terms of competitiveness, the internet took kind of two decades to be set up. You know it was a slow process laying laying out the cables getting um, inter fast, reliable internet connection everywhere, gradually updating everything, the ecosystem, um, making the most of email, etc. So it, it, was, it was, I would say, um, a slow process where even if you were, you know, a laggard, mm. um, it, took, it was not clear that there was like immediate productivity gains. So if you were late to the internet party and instead of adopting email in, let's say, 19, um, in 1995, you only adopted email in um, uh, 20, um, 2002, you know, uh, you were seven years late, but that was kind of okay. Your competitors had not slashed their cost by a factor of 10x thanks to the internet. And by the way, the internet created also a lot of bureaucracies because you needed a lot of 
um, system administration, it created tons of problems. So it took literally two decades for companies to digest and become really better with it. Where it's different here is that to become better with it, it's a matter of month. Mm. And, and you can slash um, the amount of manpower that you need for, for a lot of tasks, and I would say pretty much every single back office task, supply chains being one of those, in month. And that's, that's where um, th that's going to be, I, I believe, very different this time. Again, when you said there are different departments, so again, you're not including IT. You are specifically focusing on so, so IT supply chain yes, centric I mean, activities. Again, the plan, um, planning, every every department would need its own um, its own, I would say, discussion. Um, IT, uh, to a large extent, is going to be tougher to automate. Uh, first, because uh, you, you you I mean, robotizing the sysadmin. Uh, creates all sorts of potential security problems. I mean, it's, it's going to be, I would say, difficult. Uh, it will come, but I suspect it will take more time. And, um, and most of the decisions done by IT are already quite complicated. So I will say for IT, I suspect it will be productivity savings of the order of 50%. And here, it will be the sort of co-pilot. By the way, that's what happens at LOCAD. Mm. Um, now, you have like a question about um, something like an obscure piece of software. Um, you used to spend half an hour on the web to kind of get to the bottom of um, the technical documentation of the vendor. Now, with um, essentially ChatGPT, you can do that but much faster. Fine. That's the sort of co-pilot assistant we are talking of. Yes, that's going to be IT. But I believe for other functions, uh, it can happen, I would say, much faster and on a scale that is going to be much bigger. So basically it sounds like the ROI for embracing the technology now is the difference between actually having a return on investment and basically going extinct. Yeah, I mean, on that's, the that's why I think, level, that's I think more I, or less what you're exactly, I think it's, it's a sort of, of, of sharp technological terms where I, I believe it's, a, it's, a, it's really a mistake of thinking of them of ROI. Because the ROI is so large that if you don't take the turn, your competitors will end you. So you see, it's, it's, it's stop thinking, it just think of you are in the garment industry and somebody just invented the sewing machine. Mm. That's, so, so you have like people that were with needles, you know, doing the garment, and they would take like three days to do one shirt. And then uh, you have somebody who invents a sewing machine and they do a shirt in five minutes. That's, that's the scale of difference. So what is the ROI of the sewing machine? The answer is either you have a sewing machine or you're out of business. This is it. And, and, and well, so you gave examples before on, on, on Loka TV about Kodak. You mentioned explicitly Kodak. They yeah. invented the digital camera and didn't yes. embrace it and went bust. Yes, and, and the thing was those revolutions were kind of limited to one vertical. You know, there was digital camera. Yes, a lot of, I mean, 90% of the players in this market for argentic uh, uh, photo equipment just went bust. But again, that was something like a verticalized event. So it was an extinction event, but to, limited to a specific vertical. Now, the interesting thing with LLMs is that um, they apply to literally um, pretty much all the white collar jobs and more specifically to the, to the back office ones. Because you see, front office, if you're talking to someone, if you need to have this personal touch and whatnot, e even if you could, in theory, mechanize, it's not clear that the market is willing yeah, yeah, to, to, to do that. For example, Amazon... Uh, Back in, let's say, um, uh, year 2000, you could technically buy furniture online, but people were not ready. E-commerce was still, they, they did not trust e-commerce enough to buy, you know, a, a, a 3,000 euro, $3,000 sofa online. It took a decade later. Uh, so a decade later, now it's part of, I would say, yes, people say, yes, you can buy, you know, a sofa online. You can even buy a car online. It, is, it has become you know, part of the culture. You, technically, you could have sold cars and, and, and furniture year 2000 online. It was not a technical problem. It was more like, are people willing to do that yet or does it take time? So I would say for the front office, 
um, things will happen a little bit slower because even if you could robotize, just like Amazon could have sold furniture in year 2000, and, but it, this segment only took off a decade later, it, it will, it, it, the market will move, I would say, slower because you will, ha you will move to the pace of the expectations of you know, the wider audience. So it's going to be a little bit slower. But for the back office, absolutely no. There is no such limit. Nobody cares in the slightest um, if, um, your, uh, if your, uh, you, the, the, the execution of your production and your production schedule is, is completely robotized of if you have like an army of clerks to do that. You know. your, your, your clients do not care. Nobody cares except you know, internally. Yeah, except the clerks who you're arguing will be but essentially again, made redundant is what you're saying. Yes. Again, Locat was, was not, we did not invent LLM. You know, it, was, it was done by other people. I think it was invented by people like uh, when OpenAI, they, they went into that. They didn't know what they were doing, by the way. Uh, it's very funny because there was interviews of Sam Altman that said, who is now saying, well, if we had known, we would not have set up OpenAI like a nonprofit. Yeah. We would not have published every single of the trick that we uncovered along the way. So, so you see, they were really into this idea of an LLM. At, it was just a sequence continuation. You know, you have a piece of text and you continue. And there was like a series, we can go into that. Into, I think I will do a lecture on that. But you, 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 there was a series of innovations that made the LLMs the truly, I would say, technological marvel of our time. And, um, but the bottom line is that it was, I believe, unexpected even for the companies who did invent that. Um, the transformer architecture originated from Google, but Google was not the one to unlock that. That was another company. So bottom line, it was a little bit of an accident. Obviously, chances happened to people that were well prepared, so that there was people that were really looking, doing very smart things, uh, looking in the right direction. But the, the consequences were like incredibly surprising. And, 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 and it's very interesting because even um, uh, AI researchers, like let's say Yann Lequin, head at, at Facebook, are very skeptical about the power of LLM when my first-hand experience using them is that it's a real deal. Yeah. So that's, that's very interesting. It was such a surprise that even the people that have pioneered the field do not see the landmark that they represent. It is worth dropping a pin just there because, like, lo to make a meta comment, Locad's role in this is just observer. Because as, as you've described, we've been using both sides of AI, both for the quantitative and qualitative. I mean, now for I mean, not not just years. observer. I mean, we we are not. I mean, Locad is not doing research on improving LLMs. You know, it's it's like a super specialized topic, mm -hmm. and you have like companies that are doing it. I would say very good. In France, mm -hmm. we have like Mistral, which is a very very strong team that is doing it, and they rival now OpenAI. So yes, good. I want to see a lot of competition in that, but for Locad, um, it, it it has like. I would say very a lot of consequences. Look at we were automating the, the I would say what what is in supply chain the hard part the quantitative mm, yeah. decisions, and but, but sorry by which again forecasting purchase forecasting, orders purchase allocation orders, exactly. pricing okay exactly all the quantitative stuff. But now the end to end execution of that with all the the sort of minute things that you need to do before. So acquire the missing tidbits mm -hmm. of information. You have, you have a few things that miss. Mm. You need to look it up, either shoot an email, either look it up online, mm. uh, et cetera, et cetera. You know, plenty of things that um, small, small tasks, but in the past we, were, we used to say to clients, well, if you have this problem, um, look at, I mean, please do it. We could automate that, and sometimes we did, but it was kind of expensive. So now we can really robotize that. And same things for what happens after the decision, such as follow up with suppliers, follow up on, on small issues and whatnot. All this kind of mundane, repetitive humdrum mm. it can, it is, is robotized as well. And so, I mean, look at what we see is that um, due to the fact that, those that it's already out there, we cannot afford not to do it. I mean, you see, this is what our... Uh, our, I would say very pressing uh, clients demands from us because again it's not when you have like a sewing machine 
not using the steering machine is just, it's not an option. You know, you can't just say, um, you know what, we are just going to pretend we have never heard of sewing machines and we are going to keep sewing shirts with needles. It's, no, you, you have to use it. Well, that's again, to come back, it, it, it's almost Darwinian. You're, you're talking about, it, it's, it's survival on, on every level. It's, it's, you're talking about employees, you're talking about companies. It's, sec it's the entire yes. industry, market, sector, everything. Yes. What and, can and, be and, automated and, will be. Yes. And, um, and by the way, this is, it, it will be a surprise, I think, for white collars. But if you look at blue collars, over the last 150 years, they have been going from one revolution to the next. You know, the introduction of electricity was a mass extinction event. There were like a thousand different things where suddenly uh, uh, they were automated. Again, 150 years ago in Paris, the most common job that was almost something like 10% of the population was people who were carrying water. Yeah. <laughs> so there was like... Uh, 10% of the people had like buckets and were carrying water and that was like the number one jump and it went extinct. So obviously the positive side is that every single time you kind of eliminate those jobs, society as a world gets richer because it means that people are doing things that are more interesting, of more value and, and things just sort out, uh, they, things will sort themselves out just like you know, they did for uh, over the last 150 years for all the industrial revolutions. It's just the only thing that is surprising is that it touches a class of people that was white collar jobs that were um, so far had been relatively, and I say relatively, protected. So now, well, it just happened here, but you know, it, it will happen again. You don't even have to go back 150 years. I mean, in the last few decades, most people have lived through a few extinction events in certain areas like uh, VHS was made redundant by yeah, DVDs, but, but, email but made letters even, redundant. For example, my, my, my parents who started you know, at Procter & Gamble, uh, that was, uh, that's, a, that's an old story that's more than 40 years ago, but what they were doing when they were telling me as, uh, as uh, entry-level employees, for example, one of the things that they would do is, um, and that was a job of a person, that when there was like contract negotiation, they would take you know, a, 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 a young employee and have this person compare line by line the two documents, the so one that was a draft, and uh, the return, uh, the counter proposal of your, let's say, supplier, partner, or whatever, and just um, mark with a, a, a pen the section that, that, that had differences. Mm. And, and that would, you know, take hours. And, um, and so they, were, they, had, like, they were paying a lot of people just to, to find the difference. And now Word, Microsoft Word, just do a diff of documents or, mm. or you do track changes yeah, yeah. and it's done. So literally there is quite, quite a few tasks have already gone extinct. But it, it happened, I would say, gradually. Mm -hmm. That was the thing, is that those things happened at a pace that was slow. The, the interesting thing is with LLMs is that, oh, that's quite a step. And that's a step where, uh, I mean, literally, we, we, we just, we just uh, walked 20 years into the future just in one year. That's, that's, that's what it feels like after, um, after um, you know, putting to production those um, technologies into production for, 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 for the last year. Well, I mean, again, it's, it's, it's something of a, of, of a meta comment, but one of the things that LOCAD often does, is, or one of, one of our initiatives is actually collaborating with universities, training people to enter supply chain. Does that mean we're just going to abandon all of this? That it's a, it's a waste of time to study no. any of the supply chain science because it's going away? <laughs> no, I, I think, again, um, I'm talking of Look at what we're teaching is not the humdrum. You know, we're not teaching you how to send an email to a supplier to get the latest MOQ. You know, that's, that's not, if you look at the content of the lecture, it's more like um, what is the cost in dollars of a stockout and how to think about. Okay, if you, if you want an answer from ChatGPT, they are going to hallucinate nonsense, even if it's GPT-4. We are not there yet, not quite. So. The sort of stuff that I touch in the lectures, it's not the stuff that gets automated. Uh, but the thing is, when I look at um, supply chain companies, what is the percentage of time of people s that people in, in, supply, in, in actual supply chain spend on thinking long and hard about super fundamental questions like, 
what does quality of service even mean in the eyes of our clients? And I would say it is something like 0.1% of the time that they spend. You see, the, the interesting thing is that most of what I cover in my lectures are the, the fundamental questions um, that are very frequently deceptively simple, such as what does the word future mean? What does that mean anticipating correctly the future or adequately? You know, again, that's a sort of, of truly, genuinely difficult questions. And again, if you're thinking about those questions and you're capable of bringing, I would say, truly uh, relevant answers to your company, you're not on the verge of being automated. That's why I say, you know, and I, I still stand by this position, um, the LLMs are still incredible bullshitters. So if you, if you want to get this level of understanding, we're not there yet, you're going to have like hallucination and whatnot. But if what you want is to this humdrum and get this humdrum out of the way automatically, then it's, it's a done deal. That's, that's where I say focus on the fundamentals, focus on the, on the questions that are where you have to think long and hard. That is not going away. What is going away is like um, the, the, just the ambient noise, you know, the, the, the stuff that are just endless trivialities. That is going to be solved with LLMs. All right. Well, there are some audience questions to get to, and we've been going for 50 minutes. And a lot of those questions actually address what I actually would finish with. So before we get to the audience questions, I guess I would like to, if at all possible, give an executive level summar summary for anyone who missed the first <laughs> few minutes. And I think importantly, uh, your call to action for all segments of what so again, people working in the back room, CEOs, just across the sector. So the, 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 the short answer is LLMs, large language models, you know, what, what people say, generative AI, it's, it's just there are plenty of different sorts, but LLMs represent an extinction event for um, back office corporate functions. Functions that uh, that operates only, I would say, for white collar jobs where you have people that just take data in and, you know, transform, reshuffle and push data out, you know, and, the, and, and look at your organization at all level, you have literally armies of people who are doing just that. They, they, they take some, you know, emails and some, some maybe 20 different small disparate heterogeneous data sources. They do a little bit of crunching and they move the stuff of one step. Mm. And the message is all of that is now, on, is already, is, um, it is possible to automate all of that. And quite a few companies are moving at full speed, doing it right now. You can already see in the news that not only they are in production, but they have already started to, um, to, to just uh, uh, to, to remove people from these positions. Um, and, and I'm not talking of like, uh, a few people right and left. I'm, I'm talking of Division. large companies making announcement like we had um, 6,000 people, you know, to do this. Now we have 50. Mm. And there was like a giga layoff of, uh, of that. And, and, and they proceed at full speed. And I expect these things will just intensify. Mm. Again, uh, back office, white collar jobs. That's, that's going to be, you know, the target. Supply chain is one of those functions. You know, mm. I, I suspect there is like uh, half a dozen of other um, things that will, accounting probably is going to be also massively impacted because accounting, um, you have like the smart, super smart, high level reasoning, which is how you want, you know, to organize your accounting structure and whatnot. But you also have like the humdrum somebody send me a PDF. I need to extract half a dozen of relevant information just to. Uh, generate the clerical entry that match this PDF document. Okay, that's, that is done. That can be entirely automated. So all of that is going to disappear like super fast. Mm. And some, some, for some companies, it's not even the future. It's, it's they're already it's done. Present, yeah. It's already, it's present there. And we are talking of months. So executive summary is extinction events. It's a matter <laughs> of month. Yes, you have to act fast. And by the way, LOCAD, I mean, when I realized that, I, I spent the, the first three months of, uh, of, of 2023 just rethinking the entire roadmap, technological roadmap of LOCAD, because it was everything that I had been envisioning before was toast. So 
it, uh, for us, it has been quite a dramatic turn. I mean, internally at Locat, and we have been automating quite a few things. And, uh, and literally, the, um, we, we were so busy just doing it that we were not communicating that much about it. But that's, that has been, you know, um, that has been my, my daily schedule for, for a year now. It has, I know. <laughs> well, again, and it, b before we transition to the audience questions, it really is worth pointing out that, I mean, traditionally, we would talk a lot about, let's say, probabilistic forecasting, stochastic optimization, all of that. That wasn't even part of this conversation no. because that's already settled. Yes, that's yes, been the that, that, state that. of the art for years. So those quantitative decisions, it's worth highlighting, inventory, uh, purchase orders, allocation, pricing, as far as at least low is concerned, that was settled years ago. That's yeah, the dodo. Exactly. That was already done. People are at least semi or ambiently aware of that. The thrust of today is you're talking about everything else that was left. Yes, exactly. And, and, and the humdrum, the yeah. noise, the ambient, small stuff and whatever, the, all those, the thousand final mundane accidents, tasks exactly, all the thousand small accidents okay. that were not, where you didn't need like 10 years in supply chain, you know, again, just think of asking one random question to a partner, a transporter, a supplier and whatnot. And, and by the way, companies were routinely hiring like hundreds of people with just a month of training, the, those people would be able to operate. So if, but think of anything that requires less than six months of training, mm. most likely something that an LLM can operate, can, can automate. You know, if it's something where somebody gets it in just a few months, okay, that can be automated. If it, if it takes like 10 years and skill and dedication and patience, no. But, uh, but the, the, the easy stuff, That would, yes, that would probably be more strategic anyway. Yes. Again, it's the distinction. Yes. All right. Uh, I recommend take a sip of water because uh, <laughs> there are some questions to get through. Um, so, everyone, thank you very much uh, for your questions. Behind the scenes, uh, our producer has collated questions. Again, I, I don't have access to the YouTube chat, so I don't know how many were asked, but any that were similar were just lumped together, like amalgamated. So, uh, and, and any questions that we don't answer today, we will uh, provide more detailed responses to either in a follow-up video or uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, anyway, in, in order that they were submitted, first from uh, Constantine, uh, which, it's very specific, which job titles might become obsolete? Second part, do you see a future for forecasting and planning roles? Sort of answer that, but I guess explicitly, please. So, um, roles like um, supply and demand planner inventory analysts, category managers, um, all of that, I would say it's gone. It's literally already gone. Um, the the That's forecasting- most people watching. <laughs> yes, I know, but I, I, again- You're just, you're just reporting. The, yes, I, I'm, again- uh, The Darwin at the beach. It's, uh, it's the, the forecasting part, I mean, LOCAD just robotized years ago, that was almost a decade ago, the, the forecasting parts. The things that was not robotized was usually uh, the small data accidents. Mm -hmm. Like you have two products that are duplicate from one another, or you want to know which product is like the descendant of another product. Like mm -hmm. this product is just, for example, you just take two product description and you say, oh, this is just generation four of a device and that's generation five. So this one is just kind of the same, a little bit better. That's the sort of thing an LLM definitely automate. So you see, all of that, it's, it's okay, this one is completely automatable and that's gone. So I think that's so what is uh, not, autom I would say, on, on I would say, uh, su supply chain analyst, what cannot be automated would be something more like supply chain scientist, where you answer, you craft the numerical recipes that automate everything. That is not automatable. So you see, you can automate the work, but you can't automate yet crafting the numerical recipes and you can't automate yet the um, strategic thinking that goes into turning everything into um, dollars of error, mm. dollars of profit. You, you need to be able to have this financial perspective. That is not, uh, the, the LMS is not able to do that. So you see, but all those, I would say, mundane, humdrum, you know, management jobs where you have like a lot of repetitive stuff, that is already gone. And, and for forecasting, same thing. Okay. But again, that's 
that's been look at position for yeah, years. Yeah, I mean, like for, that for, for forecasting, for that has been the case for the last decade. So, okay. I mean, there is nothing new. Well, I'm sure everyone will be satisfied with that response. <laughs> yeah. Um, moving to the next one, thank you. Uh, forgive me if I mispronounce uh, Sherryar. Uh, forgive me. Uh, Joannis, could you please elaborate on the benefits of AI and supply chain with real-time examples? So you can take that as LLMs and or differentiable programming if you want so, to get so, into that. I mean, real-time. And first, let's define real-time. Because you see, <laughs> real-time, um, let's say you want to keep an aircraft flying they have real-time system that mm. can operate under a millisecond yeah. because you need to be able to react millisecond time to keep your aircraft flying. Are we talking in supply chain about real-time? Not even close. There is very few things. Even if you want to give uh, instruction to a, a truck driver mm. to basically steer the traffic, we are talking of something where a minute lag is, is, is Perfect, not that bad. Right. You know, Real time will be a robot within a warehouse to do like automated picking mm. uh, stuff. So supply chain, most problems are not real time, not even close to real time. Um, we are talking the vast, vast majority of the problems can afford, you know, one minute of delay. I mean, actually, the vast, vast majority of problems can afford an hour of okay. delay. You know, there is very few supply chain questions that needs an answer within, you know, and it's something that is less than an hour. So. Uh, so LLMs, again, LLMs, you, you want to get information, do a web search, grab the results, get it back. You want to know the address of a supplier and, and automatically retrieve that. It's, it's very straightforward to have, um, you know, some, some logics that do it automatically. It is, it is easy. So um, for me, we are talking, again, all the fundamental decisions, um, everything that was like planning, scheduling, all of that, buying, uh, producing, allocating, allocating yep. Uh, pricing, updating uh, uh, everything once the and, returns and come then, in, etc. And all then that. what we have added is all the humdrum around mm -hmm. it, where uh, the sort of master data management, uh, uh, communication, communicating with the network, notifying clients of delays, notifying suppliers that they have problems and whatnot. All of that can now be automated. It's not like super smart, but that's the second layer that can be automated as well. But the point being that it doesn't necessarily. It doesn't require lateral thinking if it's just, a, yeah. again, as you, the term you used was templating. Yes. If it's just look for this type, it's almost Boolean, if this, then. Yes, exactly. Okay. exactly. And, where, and the big difference between, let's say, the uh, expert system of the 90s is that when I say LLMs are universal templating machine that are noise resilient, is that it doesn't matter if the, the email is poorly phrased. Yeah, yeah, it well, doesn't matter. One, yeah. I mean, it doesn't even matter if the the email is in Russian or Japanese. Those things, they just read pretty much every single language unless somebody sends you a message that has been written in, a, in like a rare language, like, a, I don't know, a, a Zulu dialect. Mm. <laughs> if it's written in any language that is like spoken by 100 million people worldwide, it's done. I mean, and I say 100 is, is like high. Any language that is spoken by at least 10 million people worldwide, you're, you're good. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Um, I'll move on uh, to Tam Tamajit. Again, forgive me if I mispronounce that. Um, isn't the isn't the pricing it's isn't pricing itself representative of the perceived bottom line impact? Parentheses, per, uh, particularly pricing of ChatGPT relative to uh, Gurobi or Cplex. So, first, Gurobi and Cplex they are mathematical solvers, mm -hmm. so they are not even the same remotely the same class of products. Mm -hmm. They are mathematical solvers. Yeah, yeah. So um, Gurobi and Suplex for the audience is um, you state a problem expressed as a list of constraints and an objective function, and that gives you the answer. Okay, that, there is, there is, it's, um, it's, a, it's a mathematical component, and, it's, uh, and that's what, um, uh, I'm not sure if the episode has been published yet, but we have just shot stochastic one about stochastic optimization. Not yet, but it's coming not soon. Yet. It's coming soon, <laughs> and we discussed that. But the bottom line is the reason why Gurobi and Cplex is kind of a non-starter for supply chain is that they don't deal with the stochasticity. We will discuss yeah, yeah, that yeah, in yeah. different episodes. It is a very cool time. Um, but it is completely different class of tools. LLMs, it's about templating text mm. and doing all sorts of text reformulation, extraction, uh, quick analysis on text data. And, and when I say text, plain text, sequence of letters and numbers and, and, and characters. 
So they are, they are completely different problems and, um, and, and, and they, they don't even remotely address the same things. Well, that's again earlier, like when I, where I tried to plant a flag again for a lot of people, AI, they, 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 I think they don't fully grasp, and understandably so, because this again, extinction level event. It's all aspects of the job that you're describing. Yeah, I mean, Practically all of them, with the, the exception the, of very high level the, the reason decisions. why, I mean, for example, Go Viceplex is like a non-thing. I mean, those things have been around for like four decades. And the problem is that, again, we will discuss that in another episode. They don't, solve, they don't address frontally the stochastic aspect. So this is a non-starter. And then even if they did, you still need someone like a supply chain scientist to use them. So it is not like a quick win. It's not something that can happen in hours. LLMs for the sort of, you know, like s very mundane, small problems, small phones, it's the sort of things where you can get solutions within literally minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, back to, I presume, the same person, Constantine. Um, could the increasing number of court cases for royalties or financial compensation from individuals whose data contributed to the training of LLMs potentially hinder progress and adoption by driving up prices? Oh. <laughs> Next. Forget about uh, this. No, but literally, I can tell you that it's um, the beauty. That's Mistral, the mm -hmm. company who did it. I mean, first, some companies are showing that they can have, I would say, LLMs that are close to the performance of uh, OpenAI by using corpuses that are much smaller. Mm -hmm. And when yeah. I say much smaller, I mean just the Wikipedia. Yeah. So essentially, you, you get, I would say, production-grade LLMs just by using the Wikipedia. So the answer is no. Um, and we are not talking, again, I'm not talking about Gen AI for images that could, be, that could have like an infringement on uh, the, the intellectual property of Disney or whatever. Here, we are talking of stuff that is, again, super mundane. Like, here is a piece of text. Give me who sent yeah, 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 send the email, what is the MOQ, does this person give like a definitive answer or like a fuzzy answer, or is this person confident in the accuracy of the answer being given? You know, those are the sort of things that you can get the answer right from an email automatically. That's what we are talking, so that's going to be a complete non-issue. Yeah. And again, um, we are way past the stage, even if the people um, uh, have to retrain their LLMs because they have to, you know, discard 3% uh, of the input database, it's, it's fine. You know, it's fine. That's what Mistral, this French company, proved, is that you can retrain a production-grade LLM, I mean, say, open AI level, with, for just a few hundred thousand euros. So you see, this is, this is gone. Even if there is, like, the road is little, a little bit bumpy, this is already done. There is no going back. There is work around. Those things will, at best, be, I would say, a little bit of noise, but it's, 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 uh, it's already a done deal. That's not going to change anything. And ultimately, you're using it as a, a, a template machine. Again, you're, you're telling it exactly what you want to find and giving it the input, like find in this email the information. Yes, you have yeah, the data. Exactly. It's yours. And, and, and again, we are talking of back-office jobs. Exactly, I mean, you're yeah, not talking not of writing the next Harry Potter yeah, exactly, and, yeah, and, 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 and getting there. sued by uh, the lawyers of G.K. Rowling because your stuff is just hallucinating a, a, a close copy of, yeah. of, of, of Harry Potter. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about of just think of the sort of emails. Just think of the last 100 emails that you've written mm -hmm. and how much ingenuity, originality, and, 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 and absolute, I would say, human level intelligence that go into that. And chances are not that much. I mean, even if I look at what I wrote on a daily basis, most of it is not like... Um, you know, it, it is very mundane, and that is what is being automated like super fast. It, it is worth just appending that with a little comment uh, in that if the impression has been that ChatGPT itself is what we're talking about, no. no, we're talking about LLMs as a technology bracket in and of itself, as not a, specifically yeah, and, and, when and you interact with ChatGPT exactly, online. Just as, to, as that was not clear. Exactly, and, and more specifically, LLMs as. Um, programming component, exactly. you know, just like you have like a rational database, so you have like subsystems in your, in your software, you have subsystems, the, the transactional database, uh, the, the, the web server, et cetera, et cetera. And here you have like one that is LLM. And that's just, that just one way to do certain steps in your program. 
you know, that, that the thing is that do not think of LLMs as something that comes packaged like with a chat interface. Yeah, yeah. Nearly everything that I've automated for the last year, there is no interface. Mm. It's literally a script that, just, that does something end to end. Yeah, yeah. No user interface. It's an, yeah, it's an element of an overall stack, yes. in other words. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, because clearly, uh, but perhaps based on the wording of the question, that might not have been clear. And again, that would be our fault if so. Um, next question, James. What advice would you give to a young person looking to enter supply chain in terms of skilling themselves and how do they best sell this skill in the context of the extinction event you've described? <laughs> so, um, LLMs force you to, to up your game into, in terms of strategic understanding. You know, um, mastering, I would say, dumb recipes like ABC analysis or whatnot. You know, it's 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 a non-starter. Uh, it's it's so equip yourself with the intellectual instruments that are still lacking to um, uh, uh, GPT-4. The capacity to conduct in-depth thinking. Again, thinking long and hard about problems, end up with a um, line of reasoning that are generally correct. Um, uh, be able to produce a synthesis about the problem that is superior to the one that uh, GPT-4 produced. Um, that are very valid skills that will remain, where you really uh, go for the, I would say, your upper level intellect capabilities that just are, are just beyond the machine. That's, uh, and, and that are the, the sort of skills that I believe we are still not close to, um, uh, to automating. And even, for example, if you look at voice, voices in the research community that are very critical, you could look at uh, what uh, Yann Lequin is saying, for example, he's saying, yeah, LLMs, you know, this is not the answer to general intelligence. And on that front, I agree with Yann Lequin. Where I disagree is that I believe that we don't need general intelligence to still face an extinction events for um, back office uh, mm -hmm. jobs. We just need LLMs. And LLMs, it's like a lower level of intelligence, but it's way enough mm -hmm. to just be like 90% of the manpower. And that's going to be quite radical. Mm -hmm. For the 10% that are left, yeah, we'll see. But so, so for, for young, to answer the question about a young person that entered the career, again, go, for example, to my lectures, you will see that most of it is not about trivia. This is not about uh, the humdrum. This is not about small details. This is about fundamental questions like um, what is fundamentally the problems we are even, even trying to solve? That's, I have a whole chapter about personas. Yeah, yeah. It's difficult. You know, what is it, the problems that we are trying to solve for this supply chain? And the answer varies from vertical to vertical. This is difficult. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what are the programming paradigms that are relevant? Because again, I said LLMs can automate tons of things. But the numerical recipes, they don't write themselves. Yes, LLM can help, but they lack the sort of higher level judgment to see the, adequa the adequation of. So even if the code is written with the help of a machine, um, you still need, to a large extent, and I think that will stay, human level judgment to really see if it's really adequate. So here, LLMs will be a booster, but it will not replace programming skills. So if you have programming skills, your skills are going to be even more valuable because now you will actually be even more productive uh, with, you know, LLM, um, uh, with, L with LLM sort of technologies. So, so my focus is fundamentals, critical thinking, strategic uh, level analysis, and then all the hardcore topics like programming paradigms and, uh, a a and even, you know, um, uh, math relevant mathematical instruments. You know, this is not, for example, uh, probabilistic forecasting still requires, uh, if you want to be able to reason correctly about that, you need to have like a, a, um, a high level, uh, uh, sorry, a high quality understanding of those mathematical instruments. And again, that is not going away. The uh, GPT-4 is not automating that. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, moving forward uh, to uh, Lionel. In Ireland, we would say Lionel. But Lionel, um, how do AI-driven supply chain solutions affect small and medium-sized enterprises compared to larger ones, or larger corporations, excuse me? Um, I, I believe that the, the effect will be even more pronounced for smaller companies. Why? Because large companies could afford to have large specialized bureaucracies, mm. you see. 
Uh, small companies could not. So, um, and and the problem is that the small companies they knew that they 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 they. they, they they could not compete with the large companies because they could not have like a department with 200 people and 10 different specializations and whatnot. But the interesting thing is that the productivity is so high mm. um, that you have with those sort of tools that suddenly uh, going crazy on automation, when I say crazy, you automate things right and left at full speed, just becomes super accessible mm. even for it's small companies. Agility, and, and by the way, LowCAD, um, we are like a 60 employee company mm -hmm. now uh, and I as a CEO I've been automating tons of things right and left mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 it can and it um, so it can be done like super swiftly that's the interesting thing is that it doesn't take uh, a project with 20 software engineers to get things done it can um, the, the sort of you know um, uh, achievements that you can obtain within a matter of hours is, is staggering if you're doing it right. So, um, so my take is that for um, for, for medium-sized companies, maybe not like very small, but let's say medium-sized company, any company that is like fifty million dollar and above, uh, they will be able to uh, mechanize things at incredible pace and rival what companies that are super large are doing. Because the thing will be very quickly, the bottleneck will be just the LLMs, and you have access to the exact same LLMs than, let's say, Samsung or, or Apple or whoever the giant you have in mind. You have access to the same tools. So you're literally, if, if you were competing in terms of analyst, mm. yes, Apple has probably you know, vastly more talented um, uh, demon analysts than you do but they have access to the exact same LLMs than you. So it's kind of a, a great equalizer. <laughs> equalizer, exactly, in terms of, of capacity for, uh, for automation. All right. uh, this question's a long one, so if you want a sip of water, fire, <laughs> fire ahead. Um, yes. Next question from uh, Nick. How has, how has the utilization of LLMs as one of the pioneering methods at LOCAD influenced your business's performance metrics, such as churn rate, new subscriptions, and customer satisfaction? Um, so overall, I would say we are still tw 12 years, uh, sorry, 12 months down the road, yeah. you know, production grade. But uh, the thing is that what we have automated is now having, I would say, beyond human quality to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can literally see the, the sort of things that we have automated, it is done just better than before. Yeah. And it is done with, let's say, um, so usually, very frequently with 100 times less manpower than we used to. So it is, I mean, LOCAD, as an enterprise software vendor, we are talking of long sales cycle. I'm, I'm sorry for the audience who is not familiar, but I would love to, to be able to close deals with clients in three weeks. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's more like a three years process. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, with a, a, an 18 month FP process that just drove me nuts. And that's but with AI. <laughs> and that's with AI to do the EFP. So, I mean, it is slow. But again, that's why I say the front-facing stuff, like sales and whatnot, but, but mostly the feedback from our clients has been you know, incredibly positive. And it can be just mundane things like o automatically generating. Um, we have like a two hours discussion with a client and we generate like a, a, a report for all the discussion that has just happened that is very well organized and that capture all the key things that were said extra. Um, we have our, I would say, some, some, some source, some know-how, not like genuine internal technology, mm -hmm. but just some know-how on how to craft those uh, memos after a meeting that are really high quality. It works beautifully. We have got uh, very positive feedbacks from our clients on that. But the bottom line, what I see is just that my object, uh, I would say, what, what my, my perception is that the stuff that we have robotized, it's done better than before. And at, at the bare minimum, um, something like 20x of productivity. So that's, that's absolutely stunning. And we see that, you know, for, for things as of things. And um, so, you know, subscription rate and whatnot, it's too early to tell. You know, it's too early to tell. Look at, unfortunately, being an enterprise software vendor, my sales cycle are like 
impossibly slow. Mm. So we will discuss that in three years. But you see, this is the sort of things where I believe it is wrong to follow the numbers. The mm. numbers come too little, too late. You know, that's, just think of Kodak. By the time, you know, digital photography was nothing until it was everything. You see, if, if Kodak, Kodak was like, you know, just like, you know, there is this old joke of the guy who is in free fall and say, so far, everything is right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you're in free fall. You're going to hit the ground super hard. You're not right. It's not say, say so far, everything is right. It's just the wrong way to look at it. Um, when everything is right, it will be too late. You, you're, um, again, um, uh, by the time people will see the numbers, companies will have robotized armies and will have, so w my prediction is that with that, there will be, and, and I see some, some companies moving forward on that, and, and I see that those companies being the Amazon of, of, uh, of the next decade. Um, so the, the bottom line is that they are moving at, so, uh, at full speed, and if I think five years down the road, I can already see that those companies will be, uh, will be able to under, uh, uh, to, uh, I would say, overcompete all their peers with prices that th th their competitors will just not be able to rival. You know, that. and then in terms of agility, just think the problem when you have like an army of people is that by definition, if you have like if your whole organization, I'm talking of a large company, you have hundreds of people that are involved in planning, SNOP, forecasting, all of that, you're slow. You're a big bureaucracy. You're not by definition. If you have like 200 people. You cannot be agile. You know, it's it just you have too, way too much people. If you if you can trim that down to twenty people, then you can be like a tiger. You know, super agile, super fast. And again, so so that means that those companies they will outcompete on cost massively. They will outcompete on agility massively. Uh, that's a lot. That's really a lot. And and I would say beyond human intelligence, they will also compete on quality of the execution. Because there is a saying, you know, uh, in, in the software industry is that everything that depends from manual intervention is unreliable. You cannot achieve reliability if you have like a middle inter manual intervention in the middle. So what I see is that in, even in terms of quality of execution, the reliability will be off the chart compared to manual processes. So that means that, you know, agility, Cost, reliability, performance, I mean, that's, again, that's why I say extinction events. That will be the companies who do will survive. The ones who don't will be gone, you know, within a decade. So it will be slow to unfold because, again, there is some inertia. In France, for example, I was discussing with many retailers, and I remember vividly, uh, that was prior to starting Locad, I was, I was telling them, and it was 2004, I was a student, I was telling them, I was coming back from the States, I spent two years in the US, and I was, I was telling retailers in France, and I was telling them, Amazon is going to end you. And people were saying to me, oh, the e-commerce is just a fad, this is just, you know, they, they, they don't have 0.1% market share, we don't care, it's, it's nothing. And, and for me, it was already written. There was no question. It was just, again, that was just a matter of timing. It was already written. Either as a retailer, you, you take the turn of e-commerce. If you don't, then the Amazon and their peers would just end you. And that, that, that has unfolded, by the way. I have seen quite a few of those companies just going you know, bankrupt. It took a decade to unfold, but it did. And, uh, and that is what uh, is uh, going to happen for... Um, uh, for tons of other companies. And the thing that makes it very interesting for LLMs is that it's not specific of vertical. Some verticals will be more impacted, but the bottom line will be anything that has those back office uh, support functions will be impacted massively. It is important to also add to to the point that you made uh, in, in Locad's example, that the functions that you described that had been automated with LLMs is in excess of everything else that has been done with yes. AI. So again, it, it's not just, oh, we have a few things. You're, what you're talking about is a highly trained workforce where all the mundane, humdrum stuff, both quantitative and qualitative, has been as much as humanly possible automated, thus liberating all that smart, all that smart stuff 
to focus on the actual issues that matter. So, yes. And if you have a company that's doing that versus one where they're not, it's Darwinism, basically. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's, it's, again, but also the beauty of it is that uh, it's, it's um, Schumpeterian, you know, destruction at play. And, and again, it is for the greater good because for, 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 for companies to become richer, um, you, you can't, for example, if Paris was still having 10% of its population carrying water, Paris would be a very poor city. You know, it, 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 Paris has, has become, you know, a first world city only because, I mean, by our modern day standards, only because we don't occupy 10% of the population doing stupid things. Uh, it's, it's by liberating people of the incredibly uh, tedious jobs that uh, we can afford to do, um, to do art, to be creative, to, to be inventive, you know, it, it, we, 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 if, um, and in those companies, in, in companies operating supply chains, if everybody is like um, firefighting all the time, mm. dealing with small metal mass, uh, grains of sand in the machine that just derail everything, but in, not in grand, epic ways, just in stupid ways, mm. um, and it's just consuming all the oxygen so that just think of it as all those small this humdrum all those small things it's things that just consume all the oxygen and then there is no people can't even think just because there is so much of that so it's um i believe that it's going to be um really something that will be for the for the betterment of supply chain because suddenly people will be able to think you know strategically to um to not be entangled into yeah this zillion of, of tiny distractions that do not deserve their, their, their uh, I would say, human attention. That mm. just should be, let, let's have like a, a million semi-dumb assistants, because that's what GP, LLMs are, a, a million semi-dumb assistants that just deal with these things that do not deserve human intelligence. All right. Well, we, we definitely answered that question. Um, the last two, uh, this one's from Lionel. Um, what examples of successful AI and human collaboration in supply chain operations can we learn from? So do not think in terms of collaborations. You know, <laughs> that's a mistake. Uh, again, that's... There will be no Gen A co-pilot is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yes, in the end, you know, look at it's, it's always, you know, human, uh, humans, obviously, and, and machines. So yes, there is a form of cooperation but it doesn't take the form of that that you envision. It is not a copilot. It's about uh, when, I, when I, there is a task, and I've been automating quite a mm. few tasks, I sp spoke about the, the RFP answering machine. You know, what was the cooperation look like? I sat down at my desk, I spent a week coding this answering machine, and then I have an answering machine. Yeah. So now, the, every single time there is an RFP that comes in, we run the machine, get the answers. You know, that's what cooperation looks like. Yeah. And then when uh, OpenAI release like a GPT-4 Turbo or whatever new models, I do a little update in my code to take advantage of the latest thing and, uh, and, and we are back in business. So you see, this is a cooperation, but in the sense that I'm coding some stuff and when stuff change, I revise a little bit my, my code. That's the sort of, co uh, of cooperation we are talking of. Uh, it's not like I'm dialoguing with the machine. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't dialogue with, um, with ChatGPT all day. This is not how it works. This exactly. is not how the game is played out. So do not think of LLMs as something cooperative. Uh, most of the stuff that we automate, we just automate it completely. <laughs> and then there is nobody involved anymore. Yeah. This is just, just done. Uh, to give examples, um, the local websites is entirely translated automatically. Mm. And the beauty of it, and you can have a look it up online, the beauty of it is that we translate not um, uh, the, 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 the English, we translate the HTML directly. Mm -hmm. So all the, it's, it's, it's like take the raw HTML and retranslate, and we have like saved 90% of the effort because suddenly we can retranslate everything. And the LLM is smart enough to know what is the HTML that should not be touched because yeah. it's a tag, and what is actual English that needs to be translated. Beautiful. So that is already done. Um, for the audience, all the pages that we have for the, uh, uh, the, 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 the look at TV videos where we had time t timestamps. Mm. We used to, for example, timestamps to do it manually. Now it's yes, done automatically. I did. <laughs> now it's done automatically. <laughs> so, so that's the thing where you want to take a, a, a one-hour discussion, creates a timestamp automatically, done. 
Um, I, I could mention stuff that are more arcane because the, the stuff where we have the most benefits are back office jobs yeah, yeah. at LOCAD. Yeah. So it's not like uh, customer facing, so it, but it's like arcane stuff. The point is that it would take for me too much time to just explain why we need that in the first place. But the bottom line is that the examples goes on, on and, and on and on, and on, yeah. and on. And again, usually it's we try within a day, it's automated. Mm. That's, that's what it looks like. And, and yes, there is a little bit of messing around with the prompts, but I mean, it's, it's uh, again, the question is what cannot be automated? It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a more difficult answer nowadays to answer to what can be automated. It's, it's, interesting, you, it's interesting you give that point because when you gave the example of summarizing discussion, and, and, and this speaks more to what you just said, like. What, 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 how much farther could we go? So, I mean, in, in the back office, the discussion now is, well, how can we take summaries of discussions, let's say, with clients, or with prospects, or whatever, and based on what has been discussed, also search the website, insert relevant links in relevant parts of th things. Just what can't we do? Well, it turns out we can. We're going to be working on that. But it's just what can't be done. It's hard to shortlist what can't be done yeah. with an LLM. Right now, everything that is like... Um, truly high level, I, I, I'm making the stuff up just in terms of, of, of wording because we are lacking the words, but exactly. I would say high level human intelligence, you know, or hi, higher forms of intelligence. Things where um, you need to think long and hard for potentially, you know, uh, uh, hours to get the answer. Not something where you can have like an instinctive, if, if it's something where you can have like an instinctive answer, the LLM can do it too. Mm. Uh, but something, again, um, what should be um, the, just think of very difficult questions such as uh, um, what quality of service mean for our clients? This is a very difficult question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what, uh, what should be our, um, our, I would say, our priority target segments, macro questions uh, for the company? Uh, uh, that, that's you know the sort of questions where you can literally spend weeks to get the answer, and that's where LLM still falls short. If you can again, that's, think of it: if you have a question that is so important that you can spend weeks ans uh, answering the question, high-level human intelligence will give you a better answer than GPT-4. Yeah. But if it's a question where you have only like 60 seconds of brain time to get the answer, then the answer that you're going to get from a human is not going to be super good. You know, again, the clock is ticking, 60. If you give me 60 seconds to give an answer about anything, it's not going to be like a super good answer. So, well, well the point being perhaps once, but not every 60 seconds, every exactly, hour, exactly. seven or eight hours a day, 300 days a year, 50 years. It's like, that's the difference. That's, that's the difference. Obviously, if I rest for 30 minutes and then... Yeah, but what's bam, happening during the time yeah. with the LLM, it doesn't get tired. It, exactly, it doesn't get tired. You can, you can run it and... Uh, and you can literally do uh, uh, automate literally millions of operations a day, and it's not even difficult. All right. Well, this is the last question, so brace yourself. Uh, again, from Lionel: How can small countries leverage AI and supply chain management to overcome their unique geographic and economic challenges? And what are the implications for local job markets? So the beauty of it is that. If your if you, LLMs are incredibly accessible, though it's the bandwidth requirements to use LLMs is nothing. You know, it's not like you have to send megabytes of the data over the internet. You can literally send kilobytes um, of data and it works. So the requirement is it can, LLMs, obviously they are operated at a distance. So if you're in a poor country, as long as you can have an, a halfway decent low bandwidth internet connection, you're good. You know, those things do not require high speed uh, connectivity. So it's, I mean, it's okay. It do not require, um, I would say, sup a super talented workforce. That's the beauty of it. Uh, prompt engineering is probably out of all the quasi engineering skills that I had to acquire over the last two decades. It's the easiest. Mm. It's literally something where in a matter of hours you will get it. I mean, uh, th that, that's why they are now, uh, um, uh, and, and now you have like children who are making all their homework being done by ChatGPT. I mean, it is easy, like child level easy.
And that's where I say, well, the adoption is going to happen fast because mm. it's not, I mean, don't, don't buy somebody who tells you I have a prompt, prompt engineering degree. What are you talking about? It's the sort of things where if, 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 you, if you work a little bit on, um, to, to, to get the hang of it, you will get the hang of it within literally days. It's not, it's not a, a difficult, I mean, it's more difficult to master Excel than to master uh, prompt engineering. So bottom line, if you're in a, in a poor remote country, it's super accessible. By the way, did I tell this technology is cheap? It's like dirt cheap, mm -hmm. dirt cheap. Just think of it just for the audience to get a sense. Look at our website is gigantic. We are talking of a thousand pages, mm -hmm. thousand pages, web pages. So mm -hmm. if we were to print, it's probably like 3,000 um, A4 pages. Those FAQs are enormous. Yes. Sure. So it's <laughs> yes. more than that. So, so we are talking of something that is, <laughs> you know, a big fat website. Mm. We translate that into seven, eight language, I forget. Seven or eight. Se yeah. The cost to do one batch of from English to all those languages, and we are talking of, again, 3,000 pages worth of text if we are to print That's it. That's a conservative, yeah. it, It's $150 with OpenAI. That's mm. what I pay. So, oof. and by the way, the cost to do that with um, uh, freelancers that we used to do, it was like 50,000 euro per language. Mm. So the cost went from something that was in the uh, close to, you know, a quarter million, or so, mm. uh, above quarter a million to get the translation to $150. Uh, that's, and by the way, the cost is going to be even lower because OpenAI just lowered the price recently. And there's competition. So, so, and I have, and by the way, we are, to do that, we are even using, uh, we are not even using GPT-4, we are still using GPT-3.5. And with Mistral, we, we sh should try, but Mistral is even <laughs> cheaper. So probably, you know, three years, three years down the road, <laughs> translating those massive 3,000 pages will be something like $50. Yeah. You know, again, that's, so, the, the beauty of it is that I think for developed countries, this mm. is a massive opportunity because, again, this is a massive equalizer. You know, uh, just think of it as uh, for, for, for not pennies, but dollars, you can, you can play with the same tools than the big guys. And mm. you're, you're at the same level than, let's say, the people who have like millions at their hands mm. uh, at Apple. You're, you're playing with the same tools. So, uh, so, so that's going to be an incredible equalizer. And if you're smart and, 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 and have some passion, you will learn along the way. And by that's, again, that's not super difficult. Uh, it's probably one of the most incredibly accessible revolution. Um, and, and, uh, and I believe that even poor countries now have like, a, e even again, crappy internet connections are enough to get mm. advantage of, 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 um, of LLMs. You don't need, you, you don't need uh, broadband. Even, you know, if you have like a... Hotspot will do. do I, a if you have like... 4G connection, tw yeah. 20 kilobytes both ways per second reliable, you're good. So, easy. What do you want us? I believe we've spoken for north of an hour and a half. So if I could just summarize all of this. Skynet? No, not Skynet. <laughs> not Skynet. Again, but that was, that was my wrong expectation 18 months ago. I was saying, oh, it's like as dumb as ever. So it's nothing. No, it is a universal templating machine, and that is a freaking game changer. That's the sewing machine of, that will be for white collars what the sewing machines did for the garment industry. That's, again, that's, that's the thing, is that the beauty of it, the sewing machine is not spectacular. And uh, it's, 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 it's uh, well, the, the, the simplicity. It I mean, even at the time, it was just, you know, a bit of metal, a few rods, I mean, it's, it's, it is simple in conception. You know, mm. even at the time when the sewing machines were invented, it, a sewing machine was orders of magnitude simpler than a clock. You know, it was not, by the standard of the 19th century, it was not a complicated machine. There were already machines that were orders of magnitude more complicated. And the sophistication that went on it, it was deceptively simple. And yet, and yet, uh, it was like, almost of, overnight, you know, a 100 times speed up for the garment industry. So that's the sort of things is that if you think that sewing machines were not a revolution because suddenly you don't have like a cloth maker end to end, 
you're missing the point. With a sewing machine, you can still make garments 100 times faster than without, even if you can't do everything. And that's my, the, my message is that, yes, we don't have Skynet. This is, GPT-4 is not going to be able to have like the, the super mastermind that replace, um, uh, I would say, um, high quality strategic thinking. It's not. But all the humdrum, yes, it will. And thus, this is a version, and thus my, my, my message to the audience is uh, don't miss the train because um, a lot of companies have already boarded the train. And mm. they boarded the train, to look at boarded the train a, year a bit uh, more than a year ago. Some people, to my shame, did that earlier, mm. but, uh, but there, is th there is a lot of people on board of the train. And the results are so fast that if you don't you know, act now, you won't be able to catch up you know, four, four years down, down the road just because they will be so far and the discrepancy will be so great that, again, that will be like a Kodak effect where you're toast, you're toast, even if you were not such a bad company in the first place. All right, well, I have no further questions. Joannes, thank you very much for your time. And thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.